Hi Broncos! In this video tutorial, we're going to talk about how you can create a proposed academic plan for a global learning program. To get started, you'll need to download the proposed academic plan in the Global Learning Advising Module in Camino under the Course Planning Checklist, specifically Step 4. The proposed academic plan is a tentative course planning form required in the application for global learning programs. In this form, you'll showcase how a specific program may contribute to remaining major, minor, or core requirements you still need to satisfy. Additionally, you'll factor in global requirements such as language, culture, or service learning courses. Keep in mind, it is not a guarantee that specific courses will be available or that you'll be able to enroll in those courses even if they are available. Students in the past from SU have completed the proposed academic plan using a variety of resources. These include, but are certainly not limited to, Adobe, Canva, or Mac Preview. For the purpose of this video, we're going to show you how to complete the proposed academic plan using Adobe's free Acrobat Reader, which we highly recommend students use. It's a great professional development tool and resource to have installed on your computer. Be sure to download Adobe's free Acrobat Reader in the Global Learning Advising module under Course Planning Checklist. If you experience any technical difficulties with Adobe, it may be because of these reasons on the next few slides. When you download the proposed academic plan, at first it'll appear as being editable in your internet browser. However, even though you may be able to put initials and text into that document in the internet browser, you're not going to be able to add screenshots or digitally sign the proposed academic plan, which is a requirement um, using that internet browser tool. So do download Adobe directly on your device. That way you can incorporate the screenshots and digitally sign the document. When you're in the Adobe app, don't sign up for free trials of other versions of Adobe if prompted. The reason being is after that free trial, Adobe will lock you out from being able to edit documents in the future, um, which is definitely something you want to avoid. If you still have trouble editing the document after confirming the two issues we just discussed, we recommend completely uninstalling all Adobe apps from your device. Uh, there are tutorial videos on YouTube and instructions online, and then reinstalling Adobe using the link provided in the Global Learning Camino Advising module. We're going to give you a Bucky Bronco example, but first we're going to discuss what student preparation goes into this process before you can start your proposed academic plan. In this example, my name is Bucky Bronco and I'm a political science major with a communication minor and a democracy pathway. I've already created my four year degree plan using the video tutorial and discussed my remaining SU requirements with my faculty advisor. I've also estimated my budget and I'm financially comfortable with studying abroad for a semester. So those are the programs I'm going to be looking at. Based on my four year degree plan, I still need to satisfy the following requirements at SCU. Upper division electives for my major in political science or my minor in communication, core arts, ELSJ or RTC2, and a class for my democracy pathway. When comparing global learning programs, I'm going to look out for these types of course options that will satisfy these requirements for me so I can stay on track to degree. Because I've been using the Global Learning Advising module in Camino, and I've attended study abroad peer advisor hours in Aloysius Farsi Hall, I know that there are going to be program requirements I have to abide by, which I can always view on the program's SCU digital brochure. I must also be enrolled full-time while abroad, and SU considers full-time enrollment on a semester program as 15 semester units, which is typically five classes abroad. Ultimately, to ensure I have a contingency plan, I should select a semester program with at least eight course options that could satisfy major, minor, or core requirements I still need. This means my term abroad will most likely look something like this one required language or culture course depending on the program's location, 
One service learning placement, internship, or research project if offered or required on the program, and three additional courses, or four if no service learning, internship, or research is available or required. These courses will all count as general elective credit at Santa Clara University and appear on my SCU transcript as ASCI 109 Special Topics unless I'm intentional about my program selection and follow the course evaluation process. I can satisfy major, minor, or core requirements if the program offers SCU equivalents. Not all global learning programs will offer courses I need to stay on track to degree. That's why I'm creating this proposed academic plan. All right, so let us dive into our Bucky Bronco example to show you in real time what it looks like to create your proposed academic plan. While exploring the global learning portal and looking at different programs, I've narrowed down three different programs I wanna start looking into, including a program in Paris, France, New Zealand, and Thailand. First, I'm gonna go ahead and complete pages one and two. Page one includes instructions for completing the proposed academic plan and important acknowledgements. I need to make sure that I initial each acknowledgement and reach out to the global learning team at globallearning at scu.edu if I have any questions about those acknowledgements. Now I've dated the form and you can see that when I hover over the sign here portion, it does ask me if I want to do a digital ID configuration. However, we don't recommend signing the document this way. There's actually an easier method. Instead, we recommend using the fill and sign option in the toolbar, either on the left or right hand corner of your Adobe app. Um, this will allow you to type in your name easily and drag and drop it to the signature section. Then you can go ahead and move on to page two, which will ask you about your personal information um, that you probably know either offhand or you can log into Workday to find, including your name, your student ID, your faculty advisor, um, and any declared major, minor, or pathways that you currently have. For the global learning program information section, you want to make sure that you're using the name and program model listed on the program's SCU digital brochure. So here I am just copying and pasting that full program name and listing the term that I anticipate studying abroad on this program if nominated. And based on the program's digital brochure, specifically under the academics tab, I know that the program model is hybrid. And so I'm going to go ahead and select that on the form. And voila, page two is finished. Now we're ready to move on to pages three and four, which are really going to demonstrate whether or not this program has enough flexibility to keep me on track to degree, especially if I couldn't enroll in one of those courses for any reason. To complete these pages, we're going to need to use the program's course catalog and the SU digital brochure, as well as the link to the Global Learning Course Equivalency Archive. The course catalog will include the most current course offerings for that program and which term those courses are typically available, like fall or spring. Every program's course catalog will look different. Keep an eye out for sections titled courses or academics or under your area of study. But if you do have trouble finding it or navigating the course catalog, you can reach out to the program directly to let them know that you're an SU student looking for their course catalog and that you need assistance. The Global Learning Course Equivalency Archive allows students to view pre-approved SU course equivalencies or denials as well as utilize the forms for submitting new course evaluation requests if desired or if needed. Because I'm exploring the France Paris Business and International Affairs program through IES Abroad, I'm entering IES space Paris in the search bar. I'm also using other keywords such as the SEO equivalency that I'm looking for. Keep in mind that while using the archive, misspelling words or incorporating unnecessary spaces may impact your search results. By clicking on the SEO equivalent section, you can filter all entries and bring the approved options to the top. Always double check the program's course catalog 
Just because a course is pre-approved in the archive doesn't mean it's still being offered. If you remember, Core RTC2 is something that I needed in this Bucky Bronco example. Uh, however, when I was using the archive, I noticed that none of the pre-approvals for Core RTC2 are on the course catalog still, and the one course that is still available uh, was not approved for Core RTC2. So you should always be creating your proposed academic plan with the course catalog and the course equivalency archive. My page three ended up looking something like this with a combination of core, major and minor, upper division elective credit, as well as a democracy pathway. As you can see, there's pre-approvals for three different requirements I need, one for my major, one for my minor, and one for core. If I can ultimately enroll in this course while abroad, there's a chance I can double or triple dip, which would take me a long way. But just in case I can't enroll in that course abroad, I submitted two new course evaluations to my SU academic department and listed them on page four. Finally, I made sure to account for the program's language requirement and listed a course I'd be willing to take as a general elective. With that, I finished my proposed academic plan for France and can make one for Thailand and New Zealand next. And that's a wrap, Broncos. Bon voyage!